In today's video, we are doing a deep dive into the five rude questions. I'm sharing my observations based on your reaction. You are not going to want to miss today's video. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome to The Daily Connoisseur. A few weeks ago, I shared a video called Five Rude Questions and how to respond. And this video has started such an intense conversation among the viewers here on this channel, and I have to do a follow-up video. This is part two. Today's video is sponsored by Ritual. Let me tell you about Ritual really quickly before we jump into the video. So I've been taking their women's 18 plus multivitamin for over a year now. I absolutely love it. It has a mint essence. That's my favorite part. That makes it really easy to take, and it's a fantastic vitamin. So Ritual wanted me to share with you that they now have new protein shakes. Ritual just launched their new essential protein daily shakes. The shakes contain 20 grams of vegan pea protein. And like all Ritual products, essential protein is soy-free, gluten-free, sugar-free, vegan-friendly, and formulated with non-GMO ingredients. The 18 plus shake helps build and maintain muscle, contains choline to support brain health and fill dietary gaps, and supports bone health. It's sweetened with fermented sugar cane and monk fruit, and the vanilla flavor is delicious. So get 10% off your first three months when you use my link and my code down below. Thank you so much to Ritual for bringing us today's video. Okay, so let's jump into my observations on the rude questions video. Now this really struck a chord with people. I received in combination of the video, private messages, and the community tab posts, uh, and all the other social posts, thousands of messages from people. This topic has really resonated with people. And I find that most people have this one question that they always get asked and they find it to be rude. So people were telling me what, what their experiences were. I received a lot of private emails as well from people just sharing, pouring their heart out on a certain subject that uh, they've been dealing with their whole life. So I know this is a very important topic. And we had people in the comment section, and I think I've read every comment, okay? People in the comment section, very few percentage saying, what's the problem with this question? What's the problem with that question? Well, I do encourage those people to read the comments from other people who have actual life experience with these five rude questions. Now, if you don't know what the rude questions are, I do recommend that you watch that video. I'm not going to get into it here, although we are going to discuss some of the specific questions in this video. But my first observation after reading all of your comments is this, when you are met with a rude question, you do not need to put yourself down to make the other person feel better. So there were a few examples of this here. And I think, especially women, tend to want to make light of a situation we are uncomfortable with awkwardness and silence, and maybe we have a little bit of social anxiety, so we might feel like we need to diffuse a tense situation by making light of it. And by doing that, sometimes we throw ourselves under the bus by making fun of ourselves. So one of the big questions was um, when someone asked you if you're pregnant or when you're due, when you're actually not. And there were a lot of ladies in the comment section who said they received this question and they said, no, I'm not pregnant, I'm just fat. Okay, now it, it's funny, we're all laughing at it, but I don't think that you should put yourself down in order to make the person asking feel better or to diffuse the situation. You don't need to say that. There were a few other examples too with the other questions where people would say something really self-deprecating about themselves in order to uh, diffuse the situation. Now my answer for that one was just to simply say, no, I'm not pregnant, but thank you. And some people said, why are you saying thank you? <laughs> okay, they say, why are, you, why are you thanking the rude person? Well, the reason why I would say thank you is because, and you don't have to, you could just say, no, I'm not pregnant and let that awkward silence be there. But uh, because most of the time I'm finding with these rude questions, the people are just clueless. They, they're not intending to be rude. 
Some people are, okay? Some people, there's something wrong with their personality and they go out of their way to be rude and they know they're being rude and they don't care. And, and you can see that. I mean, you'll read the comments and there are some shocking things that people have said to people. But I find that most of the time people are just clueless and they're just curious and interested in you and they wanna know more. Some people would say they're a bit nosy, okay? Uh, so the thank you is thank you for your interest, but no, I am not. <laughs> I'm not pregnant, okay? Um, you don't have to say thank you. That's just the way that I respond to these questions. Somebody has said that to me in the past. Oh, when are you due? I wasn't pregnant. I'm not pregnant, but thank you, okay? And then you let that hang there and usually they feel bad. I had some people say, why do you want them to feel bad? I don't want them to feel bad. I'm saying that if they have any sort of emotional intelligence, they probably will feel bad after saying something like that. And that's not my intention as a recipient of a rude question, but it is potentially the after effect of it. All right, so that's one thing. You do not need to put yourself down. You don't need to say, no, I'm not pregnant, I'm just fat, or you don't need to say that, okay? You can give yourself a high level of dignity and you don't need to make a joke about yourself to diffuse the situation. Okay, my second observation from the rude questions video is that you should not respond to rudeness with more rudeness. Now, as I was reading your comments, there were some really funny replies where people would say, I was asked this question and I responded in this way. And the way they responded was also to deliver a rude question. Now, it's funny when you read it, I'm laughing inside and I'm thinking this is hilarious. Um, but in reality, we should, as elegant people with class, we should not respond to a rude question with a rude comeback, okay? We should try to avoid doing that. Some of the examples here, uh, and I'm paraphrasing because there were many of them, and you can see them for yourself in the comment section, but one person said something like, if someone asked, how much did you pay for that? Which is a rude question. Uh, she would respond by saying, well, how much do you weigh? <laughs> just to kind of make the other person go back a little bit and say, whoa, I don't advocate for that. Um, in your head, you could do this, okay? In your head, you could say all the rude things you want back to them, but don't say it out loud. Another example somebody put, and I can't find the comment now, but for example, someone would say a rude question like, um, how old are you or, or something like that. And uh, the, the person <laughs> said, um, why are your eyebrows like that? They would counter back with a question about the other person's physical appearance. Okay. It may feel good temporarily to, to insult the other person back or to ask a rude question back, but as elegant people, we do not want to do this. We want to remain above. We want to take the high road. We want to, uh, and, and that's not easy because when we feel attacked, when we feel like someone is um, denigrating us or trying to cut us down, it, it feels natural as a human to want to get them to, right? But as um, elegant and poised people, and if we're striving for being a class act, which we should, uh, and which is very rare these days, we should never retort back with rudeness. Okay, this is one of the most important aspects that I took from that video. This, this needs to be heard. Are you ready for this truth? Wanting privacy does not equal being ashamed. Okay, I'm going to repeat that again. Wanting privacy does not mean that you are ashamed of who you are. I have got to say this because there were so many people who also said, well, why don't you wanna share X, Y, Z? Are you ashamed of this? No. Okay, so we live in a culture that shares everything, overshares everybody on social media, telling you absolutely everything about their life. There's no boundaries, there's no guarding, there's no privacy. We share everything, and I know because I'm a blogger and a YouTuber, I share way more on this channel than I would in my private life um, because it's part of my work. But we share things. We share what we had for dinner. We share our health problems. We share this and that. So some people say, well, why, for example, with the question, what do you do for a living? Okay, I pose the question that, that that's a rude thing to ask someone you just met for various reasons. Uh, and a lot of people innocently ask this question, and I'm sure I've asked this question before to people. So it's not like you're malicious if you ask this question, 
But there are reasons why people might not want to share what they do for a living. It does not mean that they are ashamed of it, okay? So take myself, for example. I am an author and I'm also a YouTuber. When I meet someone for the first time, I do not want to tell them that I am a YouTuber, okay? <laughs> just for various reasons. It's just such an unusual job. I don't wanna tell them their mind is gonna start going places. She's an influencer. They might Google me. I don't want that when I first meet someone. And that's why I would not necessarily want to share what I do immediately upon meeting somebody. Now, does this mean that I'm ashamed of what I do? No, I love my job. I'm so proud of my work. I love it. It's my life's work. And I, I absolutely adore my profession. So just because I don't want to share it immediately to people I've just met does not mean that I am ashamed of it. Do you see the difference there? Another thought on wanting privacy does not equal being ashamed. That's like someone saying to you, let's say you're not very active on your Facebook page. Let's say you lead a happy life. You're happily married, you have a great job, you love your kids, and, and but you don't need to splash it on social media constantly, right? So you barely ever post, if at all, on your Facebook page. And people said to you, oh, you must be ashamed of your life because you're not sharing it. How would that make you feel? Wouldn't that make you boil with rage? It's usually the people who are splashing everything and sharing, oversharing, that are the ones that don't have the best life. It's like, what are you trying to hide? I'm busy living my life instead of sharing it on social media. Okay, so that's an important takeaway here too. Just because we are not splashing our news to everybody and sharing everything does not mean that we are ashamed of what we do and who we are. It is totally acceptable to guard your privacy. Uh, somebody left a comment and a uh, pinch runner, and I wanted to read her comment to you. So she commented on this and she said, my male friend who was a model, when asked what he does for a living, used to answer, I'm in marketing. If further inquiries, he would say print and media. He never said I'm a Ford agency's male model of the year. It attracted the wrong people as hangers on. That's a great example of it. You might not want to say immediately what you do because, because Again, people will immediately judge you for what you do. And some people will say, oh, what can I get out of this person? What can I do? And we don't want to be seen for that. There's other reasons as well not to share your profession. So many reasons, safety reasons. I had a lot of people in law enforcement say they didn't want to share what they did for a living. Uh, people with high profile jobs or people who are highly educated but are working a job uh, right now that is just paying the bills until they can do this or that. You don't want people to judge you based on what you do. So that's why that question could be perceived as being rude. So the, the good thing is to just, in general, say the field if you'd like, and then hopefully you could turn the question around to them. And instead of asking them what they do for a living, you could ask them about hobbies, what they like to do in their spare time, and that sort of thing. Another observation I have is this, and this is why we shouldn't comment necessarily on um, people's family choices or physical differences that we might have because the thing that grates on people is that they get asked these specific questions over and over and over and over again in their life and that's where it can become tiresome. So let's talk about the question that I received the most in the last video, which was essentially, what are you? This is a question that people like myself who are ethnically ambiguous get asked a lot. And it's so funny because the people in the comments will say, what's the problem? There's some people saying, what's the problem? I love knowing people's ethnicities. I could tell that the people who write those comments never get asked about their ethnicity, <laughs> okay? Meanwhile, people like me and people and so many other people, there's so many um, of your comments down below where you have experienced this and people from all different ethnicities all around the world get this all the time and it's it's grating sometimes the question can be asked in a way that makes you feel um, objectified so I would get asked the question specifically what are you mixed with that's the question they would ask me and I find that to be a very uh, just it's so it's worded in such a rude way. It's very vulgar the way that it's uh, worded and to go further into that observation, right? Because I didn't dive deep into that question with you, but I have to let you know that the people who were asking me these questions were always men and always 
strangers, people who had just met me. So before, again, they would even know my name, they would ask me this question. This happened more when I was younger and I was working uh, in jobs where I would be dealing with the public, for example. Uh, so I would have men ask me, what are you, <laughs> what are you mixed with? I can't even say it because it's just such a crass way of asking that question. So as a woman, I would feel uncomfortable with that. Like, what? hello, nice to meet you, what's your name? You know, why are you asking me this question? So uh, women can tend to feel objectified in, uh, in particular when men ask these questions. I actually don't think I've had many women ask me that question. Maybe they're not interested in, I don't know, I don't know. But men tend to ask the question and a lot of you said the same thing. So men, I don't know if it's like a pickup line or something, but it's not working, it's not good, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so after reading your comments, particularly regarding the ethnicity question, it brought up so much uh, that shows me that we have so much further to go with regard to race and, and everything, even in this modern day in 2021, because there was incident after incident after incident that people shared their personal stories. It could be that you are uh, a biracial couple and your children look different than you. And people will comment on this in front of the children. So there were so many examples. People would say this all the time. This is the rudest thing I've heard, I think, in all of these questions. People would ask mothers, oh, do your children have the same father if the children look different? <laughs> I mean, who is asking these questions? So many people have had this question asked, do the children have the same father? In front of the children, okay? It's fine if they have different fathers, but I'm just saying, why are you asking this? It's a rude question, so, so highly personal. So they'd say, do they have the same father? Uh, or if the child is of a different skin tone than the parent, some people would say, where did you get him? Or how much did you pay for him in regards to adoption or referring to adoption? I mean, if I need to tell you that this is rude, I don't know what we're dealing with here, but that is so rude to talk like that, especially in front of children. Uh, a lot of women also said that because they are a different skin color than their children, people would think that they were the nanny and make assumptions that they were an employee instead of the mother. So it just shows that we have, we have a long way to go with regard to this issue. There's always going to be people saying, well, what's the problem? I don't see what the problem is. <laughs> You don't see what the problem is because you don't deal with it. And there's hundreds of stories down below in the comments of people who do deal with it on a daily basis. The point is that as civilized, dignified, elegant people, which is what we are all striving for, I'm assuming people who are watching my channel, is that we would like to lift people up. We would like to have intelligent conversations. And I don't want you to be afraid of what to say, okay? But what we're trying to go away from is asking nosy, intrusive, personal questions to people. We, we don't need to ask people, when are you gonna have children? Uh, so many people said to me that every week in church, this one man or this one woman would say, so when are you having more children? When are you, when are you gonna get pregnant? When are you gonna have this? Don't ask these questions. These are personal questions. And so my hope with these videos is that it not only helps us know how to respond with dignity and class, but it also educates people on what not to ask. You can talk about so many things, and I will do a follow-up video about topics that we can discuss safely and beautifully and have friendships and meet new people. But it's important that we also respect people as well and uh, respect ourselves in the process. Those are my observations on the five rude questions video. I hope that you found this insightful. I cannot wait to read your comments. I love reading your comments. So please share everything that you have observed down below. I'd love to hear from you. I just want to end with this. When you are met with a rude question and you feel like responding back in a salty way or uh, it really bothers you and offends you, I want you to think of me. Think of me, think of my face. <laughs> <laughs> think of the Daily Connoisseur audience. Think of all the people in the comment section. You are not alone. Solidarity, we are together, okay? So think, think of this community and uh, raise your shoulders a little higher and take the high road. Walk away with your class and your dignity and you will feel better for it always. Thank you so much to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to use my link and code down below for 10% off your first three months. And thank you so much for joining me here on The Daily Connoisseur. Keep calm and remain classy, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.